interest groups who benefit from the, uh, by feeding on the carcasses of destroyed families who wrote this bill. And no parent advocate was uh, get, get, given any input into this bill. So it, it's really a disgusting situation. I've heard that the uh, Permanent Judicial Commission on uh, Children, Youth, and Families supports this bill, and that's a piece of work in itself. What that is is a commission where judges who hear these cases sit down with CPS and sit down with special interest groups that benefit from the destruction of these families and make policy. That's right. They benefit because there's federal bounties, federal money to grab these kids. That's why they put 68% of them on drugs instantly because then it's a special needs child mm -hmm. and these uh, groups get even more money. Um, so this is going to the governor's desk and the way I read it then, you won't even be notified when they snatch your kid. I mean, they already do this a lot. And then tell them, you get to see mommy if you tell us mommy touched you or hurt you. Yeah. They usually have to have an emergency situation when they go to the school, which they can right now. And that's what we're trying to tell people. If there's really a kid out there that's black and blue and bleeding, you can still take them at that moment without a hearing because you need to. This does not take that right away from the department in those cases. What this is, is this is a fishing expedition. This is... Hmm, I wonder what's going on in that house. Do those people have, perhaps, guns, I wonder? Let's well, let me say, tell you what already happened to my drugs. office. I mean, did you hear about the big case with the, in with the lady in, in, in uh, Hayes County? Yes. And, and literally, they called the kids in. They would send them into the counselor. She was wearing shorts, saw a bruise down her leg, and they brought in the police, and they told her, don't tell your parents made her take her pants off and look for more bruises. There weren't. And then they were going to go try to force their way into her house. Mm -hmm. But the issue is they literally have bounties. They have quotas, and it's just so monstrous. What type of stuff have you seen, Jerry Lynn Ward, and then, of course, uh, also uh, Joanna Scott, as you've been fighting this in Texas? I don't think the general public, till they get hit by these people, realizes just how serious this is. Well, what, what I've seen has been based on research and getting to know some of the attorneys who fight this every day. And, and as Johanna said, one, one of the big problems is they're going to use this to force their way into people's houses, especially homeschoolers. And a, a lawyer who practices in this area much more extensively than I do told me of an instance where CPS went into a homeschooler's house where they actually have kids do chores instead of just go to the mall and sit on the couch watching TV. The eight-year-old daughter was washing dishes. The way that the CPS wrote the investigative report was that an eight-year-old child was playing with steak knives unsupervised. No, no, That's absolutely. Kind of for those that don't know, into your house. Yeah. yeah, for those that don't know, I have the official manual they gave Janet here in our office for her daughter, and it says if you raise your voice, that is abuse. We're going to take them. There's no law saying that. There's not even a law against spanking. You just can't do serious bodily harm. So they're creating all over the country. I notice all the groups fighting CPS are the homeschooler groups because they are hunting these kids. They hate it. They're winning all the spelling bees and getting all the big, uh, uh, you know, awards and uh, the scholarships and the CPS handbooks behave as if these are cults and they also call it slave labor to make your kids do chores uh, in fact under the uh, UN Charter of the Children you're not supposed to be able to tell your kids take the trash out well Alex what they hate is that family traditionally and religiously has certain authority they want to take away that authority they hate that these Christian homeschooling families consider the sovereignty of God to be before the authority of the state they want to destroy families. They want to bring every aspect of our lives under government control. And this is how they do it. These attorneys who, who work in this system, who are part of the advocacy for taking children away, do not believe that, that uh, parents should have authority over their children. This is what this is about. Yeah. And this is going to destroy families. It's going to destroy our entire nation because families have always been the backbone of liberty. Absolutely, I absolutely. I mean, have you seen the I official uh, textbooks that they have where it calls the family mentally ill and a disease? I've read about that. No, I mean, I have the textbooks. We we scan them and put them up at prisonplanet.com. People never believe it, and they go look at it and can't. That's what's taught at UT for social workers is that, quote, families belong to the age of barbarism and must be eradicated. And, and most of these CPS workers, if they're not pedophiles, 
They were abused as children, so they think they're punishing mommy and daddy. They're very mentally ill. Well, I'm not kidding. Mentally, I, I, I have seen that myself. Yeah. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. This is a Joanna Scott. You're saying you've seen that. I, I have actually watched as a very good people get into this field, and within six months, they have turned into the most vile and hateful people and i don't know what does it to them i don't know if it's what's being asked of them they either decide to do it or they quit but i have watched it myself the transformation of a caseworker that comes in as a very good well-meaning person that's turned into a person that just destroys families and it well it i mean they stop. have the biggest we'll stay there they have the biggest turnover of any government job 50 percent or more and so all that gets left is just psychos Look, in the Roman Empire, the Aztec, Mayan empires, Babylonian, Qin dynasty in China, African dynasties in different regions, they would just come kidnap children and bring them to be re-educated and used as usually as a slave class. And they'd kill the adults. Now they just use excuses, your kid's got a bruise on their leg, and uh, the CPS workers get bounties for taking them, and they take them. And they got kangaroo courts to do it. And we're talking to uh, lawyer Jerry Lynn Ward and Joanna Scott, who heads up an advocacy group fighting these criminals. And I know their history. I know they were founded by the eugenicists, so I understand the whole paradigm. And it, it's just very, very wicked. SB 1440 to where fishing expeditions, when they knock at your door and you say, go get a warrant. You're not going to come in here just because, you know, my neighbor sees TV ads saying kids shouldn't be playing in the backyard. And usually it's folks go, those kids need to be in school. I'm calling. Because the, you know, the public's a bunch of scum as well on average now. A lot of filth out there. And uh, even in wealthy neighborhoods, they come and try to take people's kids now. Because they've run out of the poor kids. Plus, they get more money for the you know uh, well, uh, wealthier uh, kids for some reason. And um, you know for the better-looking kids, I guess, in some cases. Uh, and it's just absolutely... I mean, you cannot make up stuff as bad as what reality is. It's, it's, it's so off the charts. Uh, Jerry Lynn Ward, uh, Joanna Scott... Other points that need to be made about it, it, it seems as if uh, these federalized child kidnappers are really starting to get exposed. So their response is to try to pass a bunch of unconstitutional laws nationwide and go after kids even more. Like, oh, you don't want us taking your kids for no reason. Uh, okay, well, get ready for this. So it seems the battle is really on now. Can you comment on that? Well, I think that's exactly right. When, whenever you try to trim the powers of a governmental agency, I, we're by impacting those who benefit from what that, you know, economically benefit from what that agency does, you're going to see all sorts of attempts to get around the court's decisions about how to trim their power. That's just the nature of government, and it's especially the nature of government where you've got other groups like these groups that benefit uh, from giving services to family or taking kids around, trying to push back. How, Absolutely. How, how did you first get mad, uh, Jerry? Uh, I mean, you first just, uh, how did you first learn about this? I, I first learned about it when they took those kids out in El Dorado, and I couldn't sleep for three nights. And so I started calling to, to find out how I could help, and it ended up that not many lawyers were volunteering to help the fathers. So I helped one of the fathers, and then I entered into Bizarro World. I, the first hearing I went to was on the the um, the services plan, and I put on or, or I cross-examined the caseworker who admitted in front of the judge that there was no 